so we talked we previously we, we talked about uh, the removal of introns uh, so today we will be talking about the export of the mrna from the nucleus into the cytoplasm uh, so what you see here uh, this is a structure of a nuclear pore complex we uh, generally do not call them nuclear poles of course we call them nuclear pore complexes and the reason we, why we call them nuclear pore complexes is because they are associated with lots of different structures and lots of different uh, functions. Here's a general structure of a nuclear pore complex. Uh, what you see here, this is the nuclear envelope, the folded structure. Uh, the nuclear complex, this entire structure, the pore, uh, nuclear pore complex, this is anchored to this nuclear membrane via this membrane layer. So this membrane layer holds this nuclear membrane uh, around, the, uh, around the nuclear pore. So this is the purpose of this membrane layer is to hold these two, these two things together, the pore and the membrane. So that's the function of the membrane layer. Next to the membrane layer, we have a scaffold layer. The function of the scaffold layer is to hold this FG NUPS layer, what we call so FG stands for phenylalanine and glycine. We will discuss this later. But this innermost layer is held by the scaffold layer. So scaffold layer holds this innermost layer in position and also helps the pore give its structure. And the innermost layer now is the FG NUPS layer. We call it FG NUPS because F stands for phenylalanine and G stands for glycine and why do we call it and NUPS stands for basically nuclear proteins so uh, basically what you see here inside there are lots of thread-like structures and these thread-like structures are most of them are two proteins one is phenylalanine and the second one is glycine so uh, they cover the entire inside of this uh, complex and the reason why we have so many of these um, uh, phenylalanine and glycine uh, associated with the complex here is because the proteins are lots of different other mo molecules and RNA molecules they need to pass through these pores. So these pores do not allow free movement of the molecules. So non-interacting molecules cannot pass through this uh, pore. So they, they, anything that passes through this pore has to interact with these internal structures. So it means non-selective movement of the molecules is prohibited and the molecules cannot freely move through this pore. That's the purpose of putting these lots of um, uh, phenyl phenylalanine and glycine uh, molecules here. What we see on the, uh, towards the cytoplasmic phase uh, that there are two ring-like structures, one ring-like structure towards the cytoplasm, another ring towards the, um, towards the nucleus. So this is known as nuclear ring and the one towards the cytoplasm is known as cytoplasmic ring. And both of these two rings, the one towards the cytoplasm and the one towards the nucleus, both of these two rings are basically uh, associated with filaments. The filaments inside the cytoplasmic phase towards the cytoplasmic phase into the cytoplasm, they are known as cytoplasmic filaments. And the filaments which are hanging inside the nucleus, we call them nuclear filaments. But what is different here that the nuclear filaments are once again associated with another ring towards their extremity. And this gives the internal side of the nuclear pore complex a basket-like structure. So that's why we call it a nuclear basket because of these two rings. So these are not free floating filaments inside the nucleus they are rather associated with another ring-like structure and constitute what we call a nuclear basket. So towards the cytoplasm, we have free cytoplasmic filaments and towards the nucleus, we have got a nuclear basket. And we have got these three layers which are holding this nuclear pore complex into this, they have fixed, they have fixed this into the nuclear membrane. So they put these two things together. So any questions so far or everything is clear? Clear, yes, sir. Okay.
So let's move to the other page. Um, so a little more in details, as uh, we have discussed that uh, we call it a nuclear pore complex. And why do we do this? Because it's not just a simple pore, it's, a, it's associated with the filaments and the, the proteins inside the nuclear pore. And uh, all of them have certain different functions. We will talk about few associated structures uh, and few functions here. So uh, this is the, it's written NPC scaffold. So that's the scaffold here, the scaffold layer. So basically this is the nuclear pore complex. These are the cytoplasmic filaments and these are the nuclear filaments. And as you can see, they're once again associated with another ring towards the extreme, towards their periphery. So that is the nuclear basket here. And here inside you have got this uh, FGNUPS layer phenylalanine and glycine molecules. And as you can see, and th this is the nuclear membrane. This is the nuclear membrane. So NM, ONM means outer nuclear membrane. So that's towards the cytoplasm. And INM means inner nuclear membrane. That's the, uh, this is the region or the phase towards the uh, nucleus. Um, and this is obviously the nuclear membrane. So that's the cytoplasm at the top. And at the bottom, we have got the nucleus. And as you can see, uh, both the filaments, the filaments into the cytoplasm as well as the filaments in the, inside the nucleus, they're associated with, associated with certain other structures. So um, let's see what's, what are they associated with towards the cytoplasm. Uh, we start from here, from, from the left uh, side. It's written CAP mediated transport of membrane proteins. So CAP stands for karyopharynx. Karyopharynx are basically the proteins which are responsible for moving molecules into the nucleus and from the nucleus out of the nucleus. So cap mediated or karyopharynx mediated transport of these soluble proteins. So these are the proteins which are dissolved in water. They're freely uh, moving. Um, we have also previously talked about, if you remember, we have talked about the importine cycle in the uh, nucleus in our cell biology class. So basically, karyopharynx are of two types, uh, importines and exportines. The job of importines is to bring anything that is inside the cytoplasm into the nucleus. That's why we call them importines, because they import something from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. And there's another type of karyopharynx that we call exportines. And the job of the exportines is to export a protein that is inside to bring it out of the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. So uh, there are two types of proteins, importines which bring things inside and exportines which take things out of the nuclear into the uh, cytoplasm. Uh, we call them karyopharynx. So karyo, the name comes from, uh, from so the, the, the inside of the nucleus. So what's inside the nucleus here. This is also known as uh, nucleoplasm as well as karyoplasm. So this is where the name is originated from, karyopharynx. Uh, so one thing here, uh, functionally that is happening with the nuclear pore complex is the movement of the freely soluble, mo soluble molecules into the nucleus and out of the nucleus. Things go through these pores and there's no non-selective free movement through the pores and anything that needs to move, move in and out would need the help of certain other structures or certain other proteins. In this particular case, we talked about karyopharynx. What else do we see here? That these cytoplasmic fil filaments, they're uh, tethered onto the cytoskeleton. We know that the cell contains a cytoskeleton, lots of different proteins, which give the cell its structure and its shape. Uh, and these uh, cytoplasmic filaments, they're associated with the cytoskeleton. So this helps both the things. It gives stability to the uh, to the, to the nuclear membrane as well as to the pore. It helps it stay uh, at its site and it's, uh, uh, it helps it maintain its proper shape and also helps in performing certain functions because molecules can move out of the nucleus and they may need to travel from the nucleus all the way to a distant region in the cytoplasm. And uh, we know that there are certain motor proteins which can carry these molecules along these uh, cytoskeletal proteins and they can move them from uh, 
from the from the uh, nuclear membrane all the way to the mitochondrion to the Golgi apparatus or even to the uh, cytoplasmic membrane. So uh, there's both the structural and functional activity here. And this is again the same example for carifferin, uh, carifferin mediated transport of the molecules. What we see here, uh, let's discuss this thing after we have discussed uh, the uh, nuclear side of the nuclear pore complex. Then, then we'll talk about this thing. So what do we see uh, towards the nuclear side? So everything clear as far as the cytoplasmic phase is concerned? Or do you have any questions? Okay, let's talk about the, uh, what we have towards the cytoplasm, sorry, towards the nucleus. So we know that inside the nucleus, we have got DNA, it's written DNA repair, means there's some sort of repairing taking place. There are certain proteins which are playing their role. Uh, and there's uh, DNA which is being transcribed. Um, uh, it's written saga tethered active genes. So this is basically a complex of proteins which activates the, which helps in transcription. Uh, here's an, uh, what is important here, it's written T-Rex complex. We will talk about this later on the next slide. Uh, at the moment, I can tell you T-Rex stands for transcription export complex. So basically it's a complex of protein, uh, a complex of proteins which helps in the export of your transcribed product. That's why we call it transcriptional uh, export complex. Uh, what, is a what is our transcription product? That's mRNA. So basically T-Rex is involved in the export of the, of the uh, mRNA. So it's written T-Rex and T-Rex 2 complex. One is here, one is here. Basically uh, these are certain different proteins and till it reaches the nuclear basket, the proteins uh, get changed. So different types of proteins are associated. That's why this is being called as T-Rex and this is being called as T-Rex 2 complex. Um, it's nothing else except that few proteins are different here as compared to the start when it started synthesizing. Uh, we will discuss this in details on the next slide. We will talk about uh, the T-Rex complex. But this is a complex of protein, simply to understand, which gets associated with your mRNA and helps the mRNA uh, get out of this nuclear pore complex. Um, but before here, it's written uh, mRNA proofreading and export at the basket. So before mRNA is exported, its proofreading is done, certain proteins are changed, and if everything is all right, then this, then if this, this mRNA is mature now, splicing has taken place, capping has taken place, polyadenylation has taken place, certain uh, uh, proteins are already associated with the mRNA molecule that are needed for the export of the mRNA molecule. So if everything is all right, then this mRNA molecule will be exported through this uh, nuclear pore out into the cytoplasm. Uh, so let's see, let's talk about this point now. So this is the same mRNA molecule which uh, got exported out of the nuclear pore complex into the cytoplasm. And inside the cytoplasm, we see that it's written, this is an mRNA molecule and it's written mRNA binding proteins. Uh, we have talked about some of them in our previous lectures, and we will talk about some of them uh, in the, on the next slide. So I told you that's why we call them mRNPs uh, rather than mRNA molecule, because you can see these are two things. This is an mRNA molecule, and these are the proteins which are associated with it. And together it constitutes what we call mRNP, messenger ribonuclear protein, because both are, it contains both RNA as well as associated proteins. So RNA cannot survive on its own. So it needs to get, so we need to get, get certain proteins onto this mRNA molecule so that they give them stability. And they also have certain functions uh, in, the, in the export of the, uh, in the export as well as uh, translation and uh, degradation of the mRNA molecule after it has been transcribed. Uh, it's written GLE-1 dead box 5 processing protein of exporting mRNPs. So basically, uh, uh, these are RNA helicases, dead box uh, protein family. It's, it's, a, it's a family of different proteins. So there are lots of different proteins in this family. This is known as dead box protein family. Basically, these are RNA helicases. And the function, they have different functions. Uh, they are involved in RNA synthesis as well as, as, well as degradation, as well as uh, they're involved in the, uh, I don't know, rearrangement of this 
these proteins on the mRNA molecule. If you remember from our uh, previous lecture, uh, here we talked about uh, the, yeah, that's here, if you remember this, we, we were talking about this lysosome and we saw that uh, U1 and U4, U4 got dissociated from this lysosome and then U2, U5 and U6, they get reorganized. They get reorganized along the intron molecule. So basically this reorganization of the, these uh, SNRNPs, these, uh, we talked about it, I hope you remember these are SNRNPs, protein plus the, S, the RNA molecule. So uh, small nuclear RNA, SNRNA plus protein constitutes SNRNPs. So this rearrangement is basically carried out by these dead box proteins. So they are involved in uh, basically, uh, they, they, they can carry out different functions which are associated with the RNA molecules. They can, uh, they can move around different proteins, they can rearrange them proteins, they can kick certain, certain proteins out of this, out of this uh, complex, mRNP. They can add certain proteins onto the mRNA molecule. They can even make changes in the uh, sequence of the mRNA. They can help in degradation, they can help in uh, translation. So they have, there are lots of different proteins in this family and they can carry out different uh, functions. So as well as GLE-1 and dead box 5 protein here is concerned. So in this particular example, um, uh, uh, the authors want to say that uh, they are involved in exporting of mRNPs as well as in translation. So we will also talk about uh, it a little bit later on in the, on the uh, next slide. Uh, so here we have, uh, so everything clear here? We do not need to talk about this thing. So this, this is about the microtubules, this structure. So we do not, we, we are only concerned with the nuclear pore complex. Everything clear here? here? Do you have any questions here? Clear, sir. Okay. So just one additional thing that uh, uh, the same way like the cytoplasmic filaments are associated with the cytoskeleton, the nuclear filaments are also associated with uh, the nuclear filaments here. So just, just for providing stability. Okay, if everything clear, let's move to the next slide. So this is a little busy. Can you clearly read everything? Or do we need to zoom in? Sir, we can zoom so easily we can read it. You can screen? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. So kindly zoom. Okay, I would say kindly zoom into this region. On the, you need to zoom into the, this first region here, perhaps. Everybody. Uh, so what we see here basically, uh, this is the nucleus here. This entire region is the nucleus, and that this is the uh, cytoplasm. In yellow color. So, uh, and this is what you see here. This is the nuclear pore complex. This is the nuclear pore complex, and you see it's written FG, FG, FG here. So basically, these are molecules of lilaline and glycine. This is the FG NAPS layer. This is the innermost layer uh, of the uh, of the of this uh, complex of the pore. So uh, let's start from here. But do you see here that we have a DNA molecule here? And along with the DNA molecule, we have this RNA polymerase too. And you see here uh, that the synthesis has started taking place. After the binding of the RNA polymerase too, we see that the five prime end of the mRNA molecule is out of this uh, transcription complex now. And it has already been capped as well. So that's the cap at the five prime end. Uh, so what happens? As soon as the synthesis takes place, as soon as this five prime end comes out of this complex, uh, a cap binding complex, this is a protein, this gets associated with the five prime end. This cap binding complex gets associated with the five prime end. Uh, if you remember, we previously talked about it that this capping is uh, important in export of the mRNA molecule. So, how is this important? Because this gets bound to the five prime end and ultimately we see that this is needed 
for dragging this mRNA molecule through this nuclear pore complex. So this is interacting with the molecules inside the nuclear pore. So that's why after the RNA molecule is synthesized, this cap binding complex gets associated with the phi prime N at the cap. What else do we see is THO. THO is basically, uh, this is part of the T-Rex complex, what we call transcription export complex. So uh, both UAP56 and THO, they are constituting our T-Rex, transcription export complex. And they get associated. So THO is basically transcription in elongation complex and UAP56 basically helps in exportation of the mRNA molecule. And together we call it a T-Rex, transcription export complex. So uh, the function of the THO is basically to link transcription elongation with the export of the mRNA molecule. And this is the reason THO gets associated with the mRNA molecule as soon as, as soon as it gets synthesized. So this remains bound with the mRNA molecule. It, it helps in the process of uh, elongation of transcription and ultimately connects this process to export when, I'm, when I'm mRNA is synthesized. Uh, so what is happening here in the first step that RNA polymerase uh, binds to the DNA, it starts transcription, phi prime end is synthesized and has been capped and cap binding uh, complex got associated with the phi prime end, THO, which is the transcription elongation uh, complex, it is also bound to it and UAP56 is also bound to the mRNA molecule now. Both of them have to perform the function of elongation of transcription as well as export of the mRNA molecule. In step two, what do we see? That some HNRNPs, they start binding to the mRNA molecule. HNRNP means uh, heterogeneous nuclear ribonuclear proteins. So these are different proteins, different types of proteins which associate with the mRNA molecule and they perform different functions and generally uh, they remain associated with the introns and when in splicing has taken place, so they are, uh, they help the introns uh, to get targeted for degradation. So they help in degradation of these. So they remain associated with the, uh, with the intron, although some of them can remain associated with the exons as well. But uh, most of them are removed from the mature mRNA molecule. When splicing has taken place and introns have, have been removed, they, remo they remain associated with the introns. Uh, what, what, uh, what else do we need to see that there's slight difference between these two things? We will discuss them one by one. This is what we are talking about, the unspliced mRNA transcripts, which do not need uh, splicing. So here we have the, so these are not examples from uh, mammalian cells. So I think this is from matozoan and this is from yeast. Uh, but this is general. So the factors can be slightly different. I mean, in, in, in humans, in, I don't know, birds, in reptiles, um, in, I don't know, yeast, in uh, matrosomes, I don't know, in, 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 in certain other helminths, et cetera. But what you need, what is important is that it would, always, it would always be a transcription export complex. So the factors can be different. That's true. The factors can be different depending upon the cell type involved. But generally, what, need, what you need to understand what's happening here. How is an mRNA molecule exported? So the basic function is the transcription export uh, the basic thing is the transcription export complex, which performs its uh, function. There are slight variations. We will see here, how does this thing take place for the unsupplied mRNA molecules and how does it take for the spliced mRNA transcripts? So first the unsupplied ones, so the complex is bound here and CDP is bound here. Now, uh, UAP56, this recruits ALY. ALY is an export factor. So ALY binds to, the, to your mRNA molecule. We have the CDC, uh, cap binding complex associated with it, ALY associated with it now. Now this ALY recruits um, a heterodimeric export receptor. Uh, why do we call it heterodimeric? Because there are two different types of proteins. Dimeric means it's a dimer, it's not a trimer. They're not, not the three proteins. These are two different types of proteins. That's why we call it a dimer. And why do we call it a heterodimer? Because these are two different proteins. NXT1 and NXF1. So they together constitute a complex and this is also known as an export receptor. So ALY recruits NXT1 and NX, uh, NXF1 uh, 
this dimeric export receptor. This binds to the ammonia molecule and binding of this receptor basically uh, releases UAP56 from the ammonia molecule. Now, the, uh, now what we see at this stage that uh, CBC is bound, the export receptor is bound, ALY has been kicked out, and so this is binding at multiple different sites, and the, the, uh, the, the export receptor, because it, it, would, it, would, it would help here in the anchoring of the mRNA molecule to the, to the inside of the pore. So this is where it helps, so that it can be dragged through the pore. So um, what we have left here is the CDC bound at the five prime end, and then we have these export factors bound at different uh, places. And there, there are HNRNPs, which are bound to the mRNA molecule. And uh, we see here that now a poly A tail has also been added here. And we see that a poly A binding protein is also associated uh, to the poly A tail. Now, this mRNA uh, does not need any splicing. This is an un unspliced mRNA transcript. So if there, that needs to be exported out, what would happen that uh, now this uh, export receptor, this would facilitate or help this mRNA molecule in docking, in attachment to the inside or to the, to, towards the nuclear basket. It would, it would help the mRNA molecule get attached to the nuclear basket here. So after this receptor binds here and CBC uh, pushes this mRNA molecule through the nuclear pore complex, this mRNA molecule will be exported out of this uh, because this is an export complex, so this helps in the exporting of the mRNA molecule. As you can see here, this comes out of this nuclear pore complex here and then is released from the mRNA molecule. So basically, this is the pulling factor for the mRNA molecule, which pulls the mRNA molecule through this nuclear pore complex into the cytoplasm. So, um, uh, any questions so far? Or is it uh, clear for the unsplashed mRNA transcripts? No, sir. Question A. Okay. Everything clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So uh, let's talk about the spliced mRNA transcripts. Where splicing is also associated, you would see that there are minor differences between the two. And you would understand. And the same way, viral mRNA molecules would also be exported out of the nucleus. So these are different examples with slight differences, but overall the picture or the story is the same. Uh, if, if the mRNA molecules need to be spliced, what happens, you, we see here again, this is RNA polymerase two. Uh, okay, so we have 10 minutes left. Let's see if we can wind it up. So we have an RNA polymerase two associated with the DNA, and we see that uh, THO, the transcription elongation complex, this binds with the, uh, with the, with the mRNA molecule. And then we have previously discussed that uh, U1 SNRNP uh, binds at the five prime end and U2 binds at the three prime end of the intron. So they're bound to the introns now. We have five prime end where CBC is bound. So the only exception here we see is binding of U1 and U2, but we have discussed in our previous lecture. So the job of these uh, SNRNPs is to constitute uh, a spliceosome. A spliceosome would cleave off this, uh, would cleave out this, uh, this intron. So that's the lariat intron, as you can see here, uh, and along with this SNRNP. So both have been removed now, and now the exons have been joined together, and the, the exons get associated with certain other proteins, what we call exon junction complexes. Uh, so there are a certain proteins which bind here, uh, where the two exons are joined together. And again, we see it's the same thing. Uh, Along with THO, it's UAP56, which is now bound. And UAP56, again, in the same fashion, is recruiting ALY. So ALY binds to the mRNA uh, molecule. ALY, again, like the, uh, the, like the example at the top, it again recruits this export, uh, heterodimeric export uh, receptor, NXT1 and NXF1. This gets associated with the mRNA molecule, and then ALY is kicked out. And we are left with the same. Uh, structure more or less, except uh, that here we have this uh, exon junction complexes. Uh, we have a cap binding complex at the five prime end. We have uh, this export receptor. We have exon junction complex. And we have a poly A tail. And along with the poly A tail, we see that uh, poly A binding protein is associated. 
Now, this is a mature mRNA molecule where introns have been removed and the exons are put together, and its port receptors have, have also been, uh, are also now associated with this mRNA molecule. Uh, the we see that there are lots of different HNRNPs associated with the mRNA molecules in both cases. So basically, these HNRNPs also give a signal inside the nucleus that the mRNA, when, when they start associating here, that the mRNA is not yet mature and should not be exported. So after excision, most of them are removed. As you can see here, they're associated with intron. So as I told you previously uh, in the upper example, so uh, these HNRNPs, uh, they get removed or dissociated along with the introns and they would help the, uh, they would target the intron for degradation basically. Uh, so, and that would also give a signal that uh, now the mRNA molecule is ready for export. It is a mature mRNA molecule and can be pushed through the nuclear pore complex. And as we can see that this is pushed uh, the, these export factors, they help in the docking of the mRNA molecule to the nuclear pore complex. And then it, it, this is pushed out of the nuclear pore complex into the cytoplasm and uh, towards the cytoplasmic uh, phase, what we see, um, as we discussed on the, sorry, on the previous example here, that the cytoplasmic filaments, they are associated with this RNA helicase, what we call GLE1 and red box protein complex. So, uh, GLE1 is basically, this is activated by uh, IP6. So GLE1 is involved in the uh, translation initiation. Uh, and that's why you see this is, as, this, this is associated, associated with the 5 prime end and you can see the 40S and 60S, basically these are the um, ribosomes which are bound to the mRNA molecule and you can see that GLE1 is still bound with, with it. So when GLE1 is present here towards the cytoplasm, to the, uh, towards the cytoplasmic phase of the nuclear pore complex. As soon as the mRNA molecule comes out, this GLE1 gets associated with it. It becomes active and gets associated with it and helps in the translation process. It helps the ribosomes. It facilitates the binding and, uh, of the ribosomes to the mRNA molecule so the translation can take place. And it remains associated with the mRNA. And here it's written EIF, so basically E stands for eukaryotic and IF stands for initiation factor. So basically this is a translation initiation uh, factor. Um, and this basically uh, removes the uh, CBC, cap binding complex, and then it puts a different type of protein, it's written PAB, P1. And we know that there are two types of uh, polybinding proteins, I told you. Uh, one is a nuclear polybinding protein, which remains associated with the uh, polyatel when it's inside the nucleus. And there's another polybinding protein, which remains associated with the polyatel inside the cytoplasm. Uh, so uh, this is a initiation factor, which initiates a translation process. And GLE1 also helps in so both EIF and or IF initiation factor and a GLE1, they help in initiation of the translation. And we have another uh, helicase molecule here, which is a dead box protein 5. In this particular example, because this is an example from a yeast, I think. Uh, so it could be, I don't know, dead box protein 6 or 3 or 2 or whatever, that doesn't matter. But basically, it's a dead box protein. Um, and what this dead box protein do, they help in uh, uh, in, in termination of the transcription process. So both GLE1 and dead box protein 5, they're helping in the translation process. So what you see here, these are basically the amino acids, uh, which being, uh, sorry, uh, the, the HNRNPs, which are being dissociated from the mRNA molecule, and these ribosomes, which are associated with the mRNA molecule, would now translate the mRNA and protein would be, uh, a protein will be synthesized here. So that's how, an mRNA molecule is exported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. So the main thing you need to remember is the, is a few factors like THO, UAP56, uh, ALY, and then we have got this exposed export factor. So basically these are four main things, uh, which help in the export process of the mRNA molecule through the nuclear pore complex. And we have talked about the composition of the nuclear pore complex and few other factors like initiation factor, GLE1 and dead box proteins, which are towards the cytoplasmic phase of the nuclear pore complex, and they get associated with the mRNA molecule, which is being exported. 
and they help in both translation initiation as well as translation termination. So I think that is sufficient for today. So if you have any questions, please 